Hello there, my good lasering peeps. So I'm going to show you how to do some image engraving. For this, the holidays in the year of our Taylor Swift mother, 2023. I don't know if that was exactly uh, necessary to add that, but well, here we go. So we got here a little snowman image and the image that we want this to be is going to turn out into something like this. Yes, this is the final product after showing you how to do it. So I know that it works. First things first, we need to bring in an image. Hopefully it looks like this, where it is something referred to as a uh, grayscale or a depth map image. Essentially what that is, is you have high points that are white and dark points that are low, or low points that are dark, high points that are white. What this is gonna do for you is give you a pretty good 3D looking image. I have a toddler who is asking for water right now. Please hold. So you have one of these images. Uh, this works great. So we're going to select this image and first things first, decide what size you want to have this at. So I have, you know, these slate coasters, they're four inch round coasters, but they have sort of a rough edge around the edges. It's about a quarter inch of space around all the edges that just doesn't look really good for photo engraving. So I'm gonna mark this down by half an inch because I have a quarter inch on each end to make it three and a half inches, just, just under. Why are you bringing me a cup of water? Why, buddy, what is happening here? Wow, I did it, good job. Anyways, moving on, here's your water. Children, okay, so I'm going to mark this down to about 3.5. Now remember cardinal rule number one, never increase the picture larger than how it is when it drops in. Shrinking it is okay. So I'm setting this to 3.5. Actually, you know, I'm gonna take the circle first and make that 3.5 because I want this to be my mask. And the image, I want that to be ever so slightly larger than the mask just ever so slightly, like by a hundredth of an inch. So take the image, snap it right into the center of that circle, select both, go to tools, apply mask to image. Now the reason why I added a circle is because I'm working with a round coaster. So I'm not gonna be able to do a square image. I, This is what I have to work on, so that is what I got. So having the circle I have now a round image. If I click that and go into the preview window, you see that it is round. The mask is being applied. So the the things mainly to do this is to give it, uh, you know, the settings here in, you know, your image and grave settings, which we'll get to. But first I want to touch up the color of this image. Now remember the high points are going to be white and the low points are going to be black. So whatever is black by default, gets engraved and whatever is white is left alone. Now, considering the medium, the thing that you are engraving on, this is a black material that engraves white. So the way that this image looks is the way that we want it to look on this slate. However, the way that this by default is going to be treated is it's going to engrave the black area as white and leave the white area alone, which will turn out black. That's the opposite of what we want. So considering those things first, I'm gonna set them aside for a second. Let's touch up some of the color. So I'm gonna right click the image, go to adjust image. So now we have a side by side view of what the original image is. And on the right side, what we have as our, please hold. You gotta help the bird, buddy. You're the doctor. The bird needs your help anyways. So what we have here is a newsprint image mode. That's the style of engraving I was going with in this, uh, just because that offers the best uh, shading that I found for photographs and images. And I have negative mode turned on. Now I'll go over these settings here in the next little segment. But as we zoom in, we see how this is being applied. We see these dark areas are now white in the white areas are now dark that is good now you might actually see it 
like this, like you have in negative mode turned on and invert display. This invert display does nothing more than just swap your display view back and forth. You, If you want it actually inverted, like you want white and black actually switched with the engraving, make sure negative image is turned on. This invert display will do nothing for the actual engraving. Just make sure that gets put out there. So you see zoomed out that these are pretty similar side by side. That is good. Now, I also want to affect some of the contrast. I want to open up the area of gray just a little bit. Now, what that is, is contrast. If I turn contrast down, then everything starts to go gray. But if I turn contrast up, then the whites and the blacks stand out. And the gray area is kind of omitted. Now, we do want gray, but we just want it separated ever so slightly just turn up a little bit so that those two things stand out a bit more. So don't go shooting it up to 100. That's that's not going to give you what you want. But turn it to you know, 7, 8, something like that. It's very subtle. And over here on the right, the enhance radius. The radius is the amount of dot space that gets affected. And the amount is how much that space is being affected. So size and power of that I'll just show you here so if I just increase the radius nothing is happening because there's no effect being had but if I turn this up then you see it's enhancing and thickening up areas now we don't necessarily want it turned up that high but give it a little bit it just defines the edges of things a little bit and especially with engravings, it helps things just stand out a bit more. I have a very, very, very needy toddler who needs to get my attention right now. The image is ready. Just bump up the contrast a little bit. Do some enhanced radius. And otherwise, that's how you prep the image. Now make sure you hit OK and not cancel. Otherwise, all of that stuff that you just did will not transfer over. Now you might notice that it also looks different here. So all of that editing that you just did will be reflected here. Now let's go to the image mode itself. I've got some preset uh, settings here that I save for this color, newsprint, 450 speed, 25 max power, 0% minimum power because you want to hold back when you get to you know, the areas that you don't want there to be engraving. So uh, make sure bi-directional scanning, yes. Negative image, yes, because in this case we want what is black to actually be white and what's white to actually be black. So make sure you have a negative image turned on. Uh, I put it at about 500 DPI. Typically the CO2 uh, machines, you know, the Mirror 9, uh, once you get above 500, it starts to get a bit too much. Like too much is a good thing, kind of too much. So 500 is a good area to stick around. If you're staring at this like right up to your face, you can see the dots, but appreciating it from arm's length, you won't even notice it. So 500, good area. And again, newsprint, just go to here at image mode, newsprint. The only other exception to this that I would say go ahead and try would be Jarvis. But for photo engraving, the shades of color between white and gray and black, I just find newsprint does a really good, decent job when you turn up the DPI on that. To each their own, uh, enjoy. So going into preview mode, uh, we see that this is what pops up. Remember, you got the inverted view here. So if it's turned off, then you'll see what is being engraved black is what's going to be engraved. What's white is going to be left alone. That will give you this result. So looking at this, this looks wrong to the human eye. This looks right to the human eye because that's, you know, snowman. That's what it's supposed to look like. So make sure you have invert turned off on this side just to make sure you're engraving correctly what is black and everything. And now you're ready to go. Now you just, you know, click on your cut selected graphics, you know, choose which side of it you're engraving on and go from there. Use selection origin. Um, so where I started this from was smack right in the middle of my coaster. Uh, and then I framed the job to make sure it all was fitting inside of that area. I sent it over to the laser, and from the laser, I started the job. 
make sure you are framing the job from the laser correctly. Uh, otherwise, if you start it and it goes somewhere else entirely, uh, then that's sad. So here is the footage of how that turned out. And with that, we get the result that I showed you, and it is beautiful. Now, again, that glossiness is, you know, the reflected light. So there isn't actually any depth engraved out of this because we are using our CO2 laser. Uh, so that is less aggressive with stone unless you go very, very slow. So all this is really doing is just bleaching the surface. And I haven't even cleaned this or prepped it or anything at all. So let's see what that looks like when I take some rubbing alcohol and touch it up because this might be a thing like, oh, uh, did you, you know, clean that? Is it going to wipe away? Is it going to fade with time? No, in fact, it will not fade with time. It will stay and remain. What it may do when it is wet is dull a little bit, but that's because when you get things wet, um, sometimes they turn dark. But as it dries out, you see that it'll return back to its former glory of being engraved. And just like that. So don't worry about it fading. Don't worry about this being something that you know, goes away over time. This is a beautiful engraving. I am happy to have helped out. And I hope that those who initially asked this question... Uh, have good results with it. So enjoy, Merry Christmas, and be kind to your toddlers. They are trying the best they can, and sometimes they cannot talk, but that is okay. You did it! You got groceries for the week. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Okay.